Hello everybody and welcome to a new Revit Pure tutorial. In this video we're going to explore how to create a tunnel inside the new Topo Solid feature that is available in Revit 2024. You can see here the finished product. This is a phased based family that is placed on the edge of one of the Topo Solid. And when this uh, tunnel family is selected, there are blue grips in 3D views that you can use to adjust it, just like this. The first thing you must do is go to the file tab, select new, click on family. And now uh, here we have a list of all the family templates you can use. In this case, I will go back a level and use the metric family templates. And if you have a view that looks like this, I recommend clicking here on the views dropdown and selecting the list instead. It's much easier to see all the family templates available. In this case, I'm going to use metric generic model face base. Click on open. And this is what you should see when you open create a new family. The first thing I'll do is to drag this geometry, this default extrusion to make it a bit bigger. And so if we have a hole that is bigger than this, element, it could cause some problem when loaded into the project. So I'll make it bigger. I'll go to the Create tab, select Void Form, select Void Extrusion, select the Circle tool, click at the center of the reference plane at the intersection, draw a circle. And when the circle is done, you have a temporary dimension here. Click on this icon to make the temporary dimension permanent. Select this dimension. In the label, I will click on this icon and I will call this radius and leave it as a type based parameter and click the green check. All right. So we have our void uh, geometry created. Let's go to the front elevation. You can see by default, this has been created on top of the extrusion element. We need to bring it so it goes into the other direction. So in the create tab, I will select the reference plane tool and draft a reference plane below it. I will add a dimension like this that goes from this reference plane to the reference plane over here. And I will add a new label by selecting the dimension, clicking here, and this is going to be called depth. And for this one, I will use instant base. So for each tunnel, you can modify the depth individually. Okay, we have the depth. And now I will select the void extrusion, play with the arrows, use the align tool, select this reference plane, click on this line, Align and lock. Same thing for the top one, like this. Okay, so now when I play with the depth, the void extrusion should be following. Now I'm ready to cut it. So in the modify tab, select the cut tool, select the extrusion, then select the void. If I go to your 3D view, you should see a hole in this element. Let's try it out. I will load this family into a project. When you create the family, make sure that you're using place on face. If you use place on work plane, it will not work because you need to select a specific work plane. While with this option, you can simply select the face and click on it. And you can see that my tunnel is created. I can change the depth dimension here by changing the value. However, you might notice that the original tunnel family did have some uh, grips, blue arrows in 3D views, but not for this one. So there's a little trick that you can use to add them. I will go back to the family or else first, let's try to change the radius so I can always change the radius value over here. This is a parametric family, it works. So I will go back and edit the family once again. And now I'm going to go to the front elevation and I'm going to go to the Create tab, select the Reference Line tool, draw a reference line below this reference plane. Then I will add a dimension that goes from the top reference plane to this reference line. And I will select this dimension and add the same depth label. So you'll have two depth dimension, one that links the two reference plane and one that links the reference plane to the reference line. That's all you have to do to have the blue grips the blue arrows in the 3D view. Let's load it back and see what happens. You can see that now when you select this, you have this blue arrows over here and you can drag it like this. All right, now let's add some geometry. Let's add the shape of a concrete tube, just like for this kind of subway tunnel family that we have. So let's go back to the family, click on edit family, 
go to the uh, floor plan and I will go to the create tab and select the extrusion, select the circle and place it at the intersection of the reference plane once again. And then I will place it like this. And once again, you select this circle and click here to make this temporary dimension permanent. And I will use the exact same label that I've used earlier for the radius. And then I'm going to repeat the same step, create another circle like this. I select this and I do the same steps. Click here to make the temporary dimension permanent. And I can slightly move it to see it better. And here I can add a label once again. This one is going to be called internal radius. It's going to be type uh, parameter as well. All right. And now let's say that the user, what they want to actually calculate is the distance, the, the thickness of this concrete tube. So let's create a new parameter that's going to be called by clicking here, concrete thickness. It's a type-based parameter. Let's say the value is 350 for now. And let's add an equation that is for the internal radius, that is radius minus concrete thickness. And now this value is automatically determined. All right, now let's go to the front elevation. Again, we have this extrusion piled on top of the level. Let's change it and drag the blue arrows and I will use the line tool on this reference plane and select the extrusion and lock it. Uh, same thing over here, align and lock. And now I will load this back into the project once again. And there you go, I have a hole with a concrete tube around it. So it's going to be it for this tutorial. Although if I select this one and click on edit family, you can see it has more information. So you can add as much detail as you want. Make sure that you create it in the reference level view. Thanks for watching this video and you can download this family, the tunnel subway family. It is available. You will find the link in the description of this video and you can play around with it, make some changes to it and make your own tunnels experimentation in the new Revit 2024. So thank you for watching and see you again later. Bye.